Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another fun-filled video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new South African custom knife that I got directly from the maker. And the gentleman that I am talking about is very well known throughout South Africa. He is practically one of the fathers of South African custom knife making. And the gentleman's name is on the envelope. So let's pull it out. Take a look if I can get the envelope going the gentleman's name Des Horn now this guy has been around for years and years and years you guys know he was he is a retired dentist in South Africa going on 16 years now he now makes knives full-time and he is getting up there in age i won't say how old he is but everyone is excited about this gentleman uh his work is just so well known so let's go ahead and uh open uh take a look at the um certificate of authenticity and we're gonna go through all this stuff so basically there's uh where the where the gentleman comes from, Hermanus, South Africa. The night was made in 2021, roughly about three weeks ago. And there is Deshorn's signature. Now, if you're not familiar with Deshorn, if you're familiar with Spartaco, then you may be familiar with the Spartaco Deshorn, which is a little uh, Spartaco night made out of Coco Bolo wood. Black, really nice knife. I do not own that knife. The, uh, but that's probably the only way that you may know who this man is unless you purchased custom knives from him previously. So, without further delay, uh, I'm going to show this knife to you because this is really a stunning, stunning work of art. So let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. We're going to do the specs on it in a second, but I just wanted to show it to you so you guys can get a good look at the, uh, the knife. So, take a look at the overall look of it. We'll be doing the specs on this in a second. And I'll talk about the materials that's on the knife. But I just wanted to give you a really good, quick overall look. I'll talk about the action, everything. It's just a beautiful, beautiful knife. Just to look at it is absolutely Stunning to see. Carbon fiber backspacer on that with the twist. You guys can see the uh, that twist lining there on the liners. Really beautiful work. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the knife a little bit. <clears throat> Do the specs. Let's go ahead and get the specs out of the way. Uh, I found the specs, so I'm just going to talk and leave the knife up for you guys to look at. So the blade length of this knife is 3.75 inches. The total length of this knife is 8.5 inches. The blade height at the heel is 0 0.095, and the blade thickness uh, near the bolster, which would be over here, is roughly 0.10 and then midway it continues to be 0.10 then when you get towards the tip uh, of the knife it gets down to about 0.04 the weight of the knife is 3.6 inches and the steel on this beauty is the very exclusive Nitrobe 77. This is usually a steel that is only uh, right now exclusively you, um, being used right now by Death's Horn. There are some other knife makers that use it. And I believe there's a couple of uh, companies out there that actually, uh, knife companies that use this steel. But it is very, very rare, and it is quickly going away. I consider myself lucky that I have four knives with this special steel in it. It goes through a very, very aggressive tempering, uh, sort of a tempering um, process 
Uh, it is it is heat it is heat treated, and then it is quenched in liquid nitrogen four times. Uh, and the knife is incredibly, incredibly sharp. Uh, I did not bring any paper, but I do have something here. Maybe to try and, uh, yeah, let me see. I found some paper right here. So let's go ahead and see how this puppy cuts, because I know you're all kind of curious about it. So... Whoops, didn't do that right. There you go. That's it. So the knife is incredibly sharp. Uh, that was just a quick run of it. And the knife is a front flipper piece. As you guys can see, front flipper. The jimping on the knife is incredibly aggressive, but you get used to it. And what's amazing about this knife and why I wanted it so badly, uh, it only runs on washers. It's not a ball bearing knife, guys. This knife is a washer knife. Uh, I do not know how the man has or can make knives incredibly smooth just on washers. Uh, but it's ridiculous. The knife has a ceramic detent bowl. Let's take a look at these scales. Now, this is a one-of-a-kind handmade piece. Okay, So the scales on this knife uh, he has never ever used before. Uh, which is what he told me. Uh, the scales on the knife are called electric blue carbon fiber. And it also has a laminate over it. I'm not sure what that is or how he does that process. But it just makes the knife look incredibly classy. Unbelievable. The pocket clip is probably proprietary to him. Uh, he used the same pocket clip on all of his knives for the specific reason that he does not like pocket clips. Uh, on all of his knives, for most of his knives, do not have pocket clips. That is usually done uh, by Deshorn by request or unless it's a particular model that he's making where he puts the pocket clip on. He just doesn't like them. Um, to explain, Deshorn comes from the uh, time when knives were more traditional rather than uh, the way us younger generation, younger generation, I'm not that young, um, view folding knives. So he's more of a, a person who is considered an innovator in, in knife making in a sense that when he was coming up and making knives, the main knife of choice at that time uh, was the slip joint. And so one of the things that he liked about the slip joint was that it didn't have a pocket clip. So he continued that tradition with his knife making by not putting knife clips, by not putting a pocket clips on his knives. But his knives, however, were... Uh, sort of the next generation of knife making, front flippers, standard flippers, um, you know, basically the way we know of folding knives today, but he kept the concept of no pocket clip going on his knives. So, so the knife has a carbon fiber backspacer on it uh, with electric blue scales on it. The, um, the, the liner on this knife if you guys can see it, it's got sort of this twist on it. It's got like a twist, uh, sort of like this twist theme running across it. It's really, really quite stunning in the light. Uh, but I th again, one of the things that really amazes me is, number one, how incredibly smooth this knife is, only on washers, and the fact that the knife is as light as a feather. Because this is really a heavy-duty knife. So let's go ahead and do some size comparison so you guys can see the size of this guy. Putting up against some knives that you guys know. 
Uh, one of my all-time classic favorites, the uh, ZT0562. So there it is up against the CT0562. So it's roughly a touch larger because the blade on this one is 3.75. This is 3.5, so it's slightly larger than the ZT. Uh, how about the one of my favorite knives, Spyderco, the Yojimbo 2 carbon fiber. So there it is up against the Yojimbo 2. I may consider selling this guy. I don't know, but I might. I might. Uh, let's go ahead and take out the ZT. Why don't we put it up against a smaller knife? Maybe you guys remember this one. This is from like 2007. This is the ZT0900, so it's sort of a smaller knife. And finally, one of uh, Kershaw's limited edition um, knives. Definitely one of my favorites. The Kershaw Bare Knuckle in black wash with the carbon fiber scale. So as you can see, the, the knife is, you know, even maybe a little bit larger than the... Uh, Yeah, a little bit larger uh, than the bare knuckle knife. So it's a big, big sucker, but it's a lot of fun. The knife is a lot of fun. Now, uh, as I disclosed earlier, this is not the only Mbubu I own. Now, let me pull out my other one, which has been fairly used. Um, this one's a little bit different. It's the same, but it's same model, but it's different. Uh, different knife entirely so here is the other one so you can compare the two we're going to take a look at both of these in a second so you can see this is a very 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 special um imbubu knife made by des horn this is my coronavirus knife um uh, you know i got i was originally going to ask for blue and red but they don't have red so i said great why not make it blue and orange so the blue and the orange basically represents the coronavirus uh, and instead of it being red, it's orange to signify hope that we'll find a vaccine. And it looks like we're definitely now, that, that dream is now coming true because, you know, there is a vaccine now. How quickly they can distribute it now um, is what we're hoping for. So as you guys can see, two of the same knife, but completely different. Not only completely different in look, but completely different in mechanics. Uh, this knife is the original Mbubu setup with just washers, as you can see. Like I said, I can't, I can't believe how smooth it is. It's incredibly smooth, only on washers. Now, this, let me put this one aside here. This is the Mbubu that I got about five, six months ago from Death's Horn. This one runs on ball bearings. And this one's incredibly special, guys, because you're never going to see another one like it again. He will probably never make another Mbubu with ball bearings in it. Uh, all of the models of this knife only run on washers. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about getting this piece. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you can tell this one's on ball bearings because when you disengage the liner lock, the blade just falls shut. There's no stopping. Whereas with this one, yeah, there's a stopping, but this is pretty much normally how ball bearing knives operate. See? I mean, it's not like it's going to fall shut by itself. There's usually this, see, this sort of stopping point. But just a little bit of gravity, and the knife will fall shut. So a lot of people mistake this knife for being a ball bearing knife. But because Death's Horn is such a master with washers, you really cannot tell the difference. The way he makes the knife um, is just absolutely stunning. So let me bring out the other Mbubu again so you can see the difference. Uh, let's open it up. So I'm going to put it up this way so you guys can see. First of all, you guys can see that this version of the knife is so much more thicker than this version, which is a lot thinner, as you guys can tell. This one is so thick 
that it actually needs, maybe if you close it, yeah, I think if you close it, you can see, um, it actually has, um, also my mind escapes me, a, uh, a relief cut right there on the inside of the liner. Uh, he's got a relief cut on that, or on this part of the version of the knife, where on uh, this version of the knife, there is no relief cut. It's not needed. So this is completely straight. Actually, I think the lighting is better if I do it this way. And as you guys can see, there's a break in the titanium liner right about here. Uh, when I first got the knife, I thought it was broken. And it turns out it's just a relief cut for the knife. Um, yeah, so this one's the fall shut one. I'll take this one put it aside. So, again, yeah, if you're looking to get a custom... Now, keep in mind the price for this knife, uh, it's up there. Uh, uh, the table price for this knife that I purchased... I usually don't like to mention the prices, but I don't know, maybe I should. Um, the price for this knife was $740, um, including shipping and everything. I didn't, you know... Basically, he just did DHL and uh, sent sent it to me. So the knife is really up there in price, but you have to keep in mind, for those of you that are not familiar with custom knives, uh, you are what you're getting is a knife that is completely made by hand from start to finish by one guy. In other words, all the attention was put into this knife. This knife went through a final check. I believe that's home told me four times to make sure that everything was good to go before he shipped it out to me. Um, that's just the kind of person that he is. Uh, he really is just an amazing, amazing knife maker. And I wanted you guys to take a look at this beautiful piece because I've been waiting to get it for such a long time. So happy it's finally arrived. And with the arrival of, the, not this knife, but the next video that I'm going to do, because I have another knife, um, I want to say that I have now 30 South African custom knives. And I'll give you another quick shot look at it before I close this video out, because this is really just an overview. I mean, all my videos mostly overviews, so you guys can take a look at it. Love that twist design. So this is Omar, the knife shark guy. Uh, almost forgot to mention the back spacer, 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 spacer is, uh, carbon fiber. Really, really very nice and makes the knife incredibly light. So. So this is Omar, the knife shark guy, signing off, showing you my latest custom by Des Horn, the front flipper in boo boo. Custom. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful knife. Shimmies and shines in that electric blue carbon fiber. Give me a good, nice, quick shot at it before I say goodbye. This is Omar, the Knife Shark Guy, signing off with my Des Horn Custom. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a wonderful evening, and I'll be back because I got another knife. Have a good evening.